I'm Jamie with the Santa Rosa Plateau Nature Education Foundation. On this episode of Hawks, Rocks, and Nature Talks, we'll be exploring the Santa Rosa Plateau Ecological Reserve. Come along with me! Explorers, I'm so excited to introduce you to my good friend Rob. Hi Rob! Welcome, hi! Rob, can you tell us what your job is here at the Plateau? Of course. I am a park interpreter for Riverside County Park District and it's my responsibility and my privilege really to share the stories of this wonderful place with visiting school children and other members of the general public so they can be made aware of it and so they can appreciate it more. That is a really cool job. So can you share with us a little bit about this place? We are located in Southern California at the southern end of the Santa Ana Mountains. Here sits the Santa Rosa Plateau. Compared to other plateaus, this one is pretty small, but it is incredibly unique and very special. This little piece of dirt that we're standing on is part of nearly 10,000 acres of wide open and protected space. Wow, that's a lot of nature. It's so beautiful. We are standing in the geographical center of the reserve. Over there on a clear day, you can see the ocean. Do you see that flat elevated land over there? It's called a mesa. And all of this could have been dramatically different because that mesa was going to be an airport. Because of the diversity of the plants and animals on the plateau, the loss would have been so tragic that local communities pulled together and bought this land for conservation. There's a lot of open space out here, but I bet some people think of it as just grass and trees. Just grass and trees? Teacher Jamie, I have a lot to share with you and explore with you, so let's go. Let's go. Does this look like just grass to you? Wow, it's so green and lush here. Yes, we're at a low point on the Santa Rosa Plateau now, so the water, when it falls up in the grasslands, will percolate down and make it to this low point right here. And that's why we need to stay on the trails and the bridges so we don't step off and crush turtle eggs or squish hiding frogs. I see that you're drawing things again. Yeah, I like to take notes and uh, draw pictures whenever I'm out and about. Uh, then I can take it back and research more later and remember my experiences. Are these streams the only place where there's water on the plateau? That's a wonderful question. Let me take you to another very special wetland. Welcome to our other wetland. Wetland? I thought there'd be water here. Well, a wetland is an ecosystem that has water above ground at least part of the year. Now this wetland, it needs a rainy season of about eight inches of rainfall and then this will be a shallow pool of water which will only last a few months and then come summer will completely dry up. Well when the water's gone what happens to all the animals that live here? Well some of the animals like spadefoot toads and fairy shrimp will be under the ground for the rest of the year but some that are here temporarily like dragonflies that grow up in the water they'll simply fly away. Well, that kind of explains the boardwalk too. That way we can come and visit, but we're not harming any of the areas where the plants and animals are. That's pretty cool. Yes, and especially when there is water, it's very important that people stay on the boardwalk and not touch the water because that could change the chemistry of the water and really alter the life that lives in the pool. This really is fragile habitat. I'm glad there's a way that we can view it without hurting it. Yes, and that's the ultimate challenge that we have, is to share these wonderful places and diverse ecosystems while helping people understand that there's behavioral restrictions that allow us to help people enjoy it without having them destroy what they came to enjoy. Now let's go visit another more common ecosystem that has its own conservation challenges.
vernal pools are very rare, but now we're in a more common plant community called the chaparral. Ouch! It's kind of pokey and scratchy out here. Well, we are on a slope, and since water flows down, these plants have to be adapted to conserving that water. So they have small pointy leaves and sharp kind of tough woody stems. And that's why cowboys and cowgirls invented chaps to protect their legs as they rode their horses through the chaparral. Oh yeah, I've heard of those, but shouldn't they be called shaps, not chaps? <laughs> <laughs> why not? But remember, Chaparral is a biome, or plant community. That's scrub oak. That's manzanita. Those are plants. All of them together make up the plant community of chaparral. That makes sense, because it's more than just one type of living thing out here. So this is the most common ecosystem in California? It stretches from Oregon all the way down to Baja, California. But the problem is, it's adapted to fire, but if it burns too often, we'll lose it. So be careful with fire. Welcome to the Coastal Sage Scrub. Rob, this looks like chaparral. Well, it's similar, but it's a lot less wet because it's on south facing slopes and it dries out more with direct sunlight and so the plants are a lot smaller and less dense here. That makes sense. Why is it called coastal though? We're not near the beach. Well we're on its easternmost edge of its historic habitat which is about 20 miles inland from the coast and 90 percent of this habitat is gone because guess where people also like to live? Near the, the coast. coast. So when you're finished with your notes, let me take you to another rare habitat that's up here on the plateau. Cool, let's go. I know this one. This is the grasslands. Yes, but this is not just a grassland. We are standing amongst bunch grass prairie. Much of California's bunch grass prairie has been changed to European annual grassland. This grass right here could be hundreds of years old and have been stepped on by California grizzly bear, just like you see on the California flag. Wow, it's so bright. Can we go someplace shadier now? Oh, it's so nice and shady down here. These trees are huge. Yes, and it's so cool here because this is the coast live oak, oak woodland, and these leaves have three layers of photosynthetic cells, which means they absorb a lot of light. In the woodland, you have habitat and shelter for all kinds of animals. It's the reason why Native Americans invented sandals to protect their feet from the sharp leaves, and it's one of the reasons why this is one of the most populated areas in Western North America here of a diverse array of cultures of Native Americans, the oak woodland. So let's go see one of the historic living areas here up on the Santa Rosa Plateau. Sounds good. The Santa Rosa Plateau Ecological Reserve does not only protect the natural history of the plateau, it also protects the cultural history as well. So people have lived up here on the plateau too? Yes, these structures are evidence that people have lived here for at least 200 years, but let's go see where people have been living for thousands of years. Thousands of years? Mm -hmm. How can you tell? Let me show you. I think I see something. Let's go check it out. Holes are cool, Rob. What is it? It's a kitchen. A kitchen? Well, it's a food processing site where food was prepared, so you can call it a kitchen. What did they make in here? Well, the main food source for Native Americans in this area was the acorn. 
and the acorn, which is the, of course the seed of the oak tree, tastes terrible. You can't just break the shell off and throw it in your mouth like you do an almond. You have to use these tools to prepare it. This is an artifact. It is a pestle which was used to crush the acorn and then that flour from the crushed acorn would have water poured over it to leach out the tannic acid which made it taste terrible. This is another artifact but this was used for crushing smaller seeds on a slick. These are bedrock mortars for big seeds. A slick was for smaller seeds like grass seeds. And so these are artifacts. But these, since you can't move them, are called features. A feature is something really old that you cannot move. An artifact is something that you can move. I can eat, be, imagine them being used right here. It's fascinating. Yes, food is fundamentally fascinating. And fundamentally delicious. Let's eat lunch. From the open spaces, the ecosystems, the native cultures, the endangered plants and animals, it's no wonder people work so hard to protect this stunning area. Thank you so much, Rob, for taking us and showing us around the Santa Rosa Plateau today. I wish we could stay longer. Oh, don't worry. There's always plenty more to explore on our next adventure. See you next time. Bye. Bye.